Welcome everybody. Welcome to this special episode of Six Five on the Road. We are here in Washington D.C. at the Gaylord Resort and uh, enjoying a little bit of time at the Old Hickory Restaurant. I'm joined by a couple of gentlemen. We're going to have a really fascinating conversation about tape. And believe it or not, we're, we're need to move off tape for lots of good reasons, but before we kind of get into that, I want to introduce Tomer and also to Michael. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So we still run tape in many environments, but there's some real challenges, kind of impetus to move off of tape, not just to modernize, but also there's other drivers. Talk a little bit about what some of those are. What are the reasons people are moving off tape right now? So a lot of customers perceive tape as secondary storage, because this is what the, the, the usage I've been for the past 40 years or so since tape was first introduced. And now that there are not a lot of variety of customers of, of vendors that actually create those tape solutions out there. They're like last four major companies that, that provide that. And customers no longer have the power to choose from different vendors. And that affects obviously the price that they need to pay to each vendor. And they're limited to the technology because the technology kind of siloed the data um, and you can no longer do something with the data when it's siloed. And what that came about is object storage came here to resolve that issue and allow customers to actually transition from one secondary technology, secondary storage technology to a new one that is more open to the world. It's cloud-based, it's more scalable. Uh, it allows them to actually do something with the data when, once it's there. And customers are now trying to see the different sides of it and understand and comprehend the fact that the data is no longer on tape but on a different technology uh, and what they can gain from it because they can gain more scalability especially if they go cloud they can use the, the pay as you go and grow as you grow as, as you need model uh, in the cloud they can enhance the, their security and compliance uh, um, needs whether it's because of regulation like in Europe with Dora um, they can leverage cloud object storage for that because they, they can leverage the, um, um, what's it called? Forgot the name of it, um, object locking capabilities. Mm. Sorry about that. Um, which allows them to actually store data in immutable, immutable fashion, which then means that the data could not be tempered even when, when a cyber attack or a cyber event happens. Uh, and they could also leverage the data. Like the data could be then leveraged by an, an ELT process uh, to be later load, uh, loaded into a data lake to be consumed and, and actually affect business decisions. Well, My Michael, talk a little bit. You mentioned, Tom, uh, about regulatory frameworks. Obviously, a lot of discussion around DORA and NIST 2 and things like that, NIST in Europe. Um, that is a driver for moving off of tape as well because there's security concerns, privacy concerns, compliance reporting around that. Talk about that, Michael. Yeah, so uh, we do see a lot of, of customers in, in the finance um, vectors and, and the insurance vectors that are looking into uh, complying with, with new regulations. So DOR, for example, in, in, the, in, in the EU is, well, not relatively new. It's actually been there for a few years. And we see organizations looking for ways to um, create another copy of their data into different locations, uh, not necessarily in their uh, data centers. So object storage would be the, one of the best solutions because with object storage you can actually create the data in a different location. And um, again, we see more and more customers looking into that, looking into the flexibility, scalability of, of uh, object storage where keeping their, their third copy of the data. Tom mentioned air gap. Uh, that's another uh, functionality or another requirement by Dora. It allows you to recover the data without it being tempered. So we do see quite a lot of interest into, into object storage and, um, and any cloud. Talk a little bit about what that transition looks like. Just, you know, what does it take to move from tape to the cloud? So it's, it's a journey. First of all, not all customers feel comfortable on the get-go to, to actually move everything. So they start with taking an, an additional backup and they start to understand how this works and, and they gain the, uh, I wanna say they get more comfortable with the fact that the technology works because they don't know that object storage has been there since the late 1990s, uh, but it's been there a minute. It's not all this as tape infrastructure, but it's, it's still there for a while now. 
and they can trust it. It's reliable, it's secure, and so they take that first step into the cloud journey, and once they get the hand of it and understand how it works, they start to replace their old uh, traditional ways of doing data management, backup, archive, and stuff like that. They move that off to cloud as well, and once that's done, basically, not a lot is left on tape. Most of it on tape currently is is backups, and but you still have other stuff that that writes other applications writing to tape, right? And you need to mitigate this as well. And with BMC Amy Cloud, we we just announced we just released like two months ago uh, a new a new version of cloud data set that allows those applications to seamlessly uh, write to cloud object storage as if it was tape. So the applications the is not aware under the covers that there is no tape, uh, but only cloud object storage, so they can now mitigate this need that customers have, like writing their uh, uh, auditing information, like SMF logs and ZOS. Uh, they can write it directly to cloud object storage, whether it's DB2 backups that are still written to tape, that could be offloaded to cloud object storage as well, and that actually is the last step for customers to actually, uh, I wanna say, retire the, the VTL and move off to a new technology that is more scalable and will allow them to do everything that they did with tape, but just with a new technology. Michael, talk about those are the process and the capabilities of what you have. What are the benefits to the business? I mean, resilience is a big focus now, right? It's not just about maintaining uptime and stability. Right, right. Uh, resiliency. Um, I, I just mentioned, so um, I, I talked to some customers and they they sometimes have a few concerns about, you know, like a, it's, it's a big bank migration, so you stop one thing and you start, uh, you start uh, the other, you stop the existing, the legacy um, tape management system, and you bring up Amy Cloud. It's a journey, as, as Tom mentioned, right? So it is, uh, it takes time. We are working with the customers. We provide them all the support they need. And I think uh, from feedback we get from, from many customers, it's actually... It's actually enjoyable because you know they learn new technology, they learn a new product, uh, and the results they get are, are much better when we compare it to, to legacy uh, systems. And, and it's important to know that they also not, they're not just moving off from one technology to another. We're trying to remove the layer of complexity that tape management is is adding to the layer of, of tape uh, uh, solutions, and we are not trying to to manage those tapes. And that layer has been removed, and they no longer need to do all that complex uh, uh, tape-related maintenance that needs to happen every once in a while. Like they don't need to do any reorg or resetting the tape uh, that that will you know mitigate the the issues that they have. So, so they will uh, manage the tapes more correctly. Like we're trying to do it differently, and we're doing it in a way that they manage their data rather than than managing the hub or managing their tapes. You don't need to worry about how many writes have we done to this cartridge, you know, the offsite storage Correct. of them, you don't need rotation, to, all yeah, of Yeah, you don't issues. need to stack anything on a single tape. You can spread it out now, uh, and that will be more efficient, and, and you don't need to do that now, especially with new hires on the mainframe world. Skill gaps is a big thing, and this will allow us to remove another layer of complexity that, that's been there for a while. Great, I feel like we just scratched the surface, no pun intended, to scratching tape uh, of what we can do in the cloud. So, uh, Tom and Michael, very uh, pleasant talking with you and thanks for sharing with this uh, journey, moving off tape and moving to a much more, I think, capable environment in the cloud. Thank you for listening in on our 6.5 on the road discussion today. We'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button. Also, feel free to check us out on social media and go to 6.5.com, 6.5media.com, Tons of videos, lots of great discussions just like this one. We look forward to seeing you again.